All right, so today's video is going to be all about critical power and why it can be more useful than threshold um, as a use of testing people. So first of all, we'll just sort of go through what critical power is and after sort of go through the good parts and maybe the not so good parts. So this is a really good uh, image about what critical power is. So what it is, is basically there's a power where basically you can ride uh, without drawing on your anaerobic work capacity, which is known as W prime. So you can see on this is this thing at the bottom. Um, above it, there's a exponential decay line here basically or it's actually an asymptote sorry um which is where your anaerobic work capacity is so what you can do is if you know this asymptote which people do um then you can plug in your numbers so you know the duration on the time scale and you can work out both critical power um as well as your anaerobic work capacity now the reason this is quite useful is because it allows you to characterize what kind of athlete you are so for example uh, if there was a track sprinter, you'd expect a very large anaerobic work capacity, but maybe not a large critical power and vice versa for sort of a grand tour rider or someone with a lot more um, advanced endurance capability. So the reason why I think this is quite good um, is because it allows you to show more in depth. So one guy I coached today, he, this is some of his numbers. Um, he's gained a lot recently, like 40 watts on this. But what you can see is that despite his training actually being super, super aerobic, his anaerobic capacity has gone up a lot. So you can see here that the critical power has only gone up maybe 20 watts, but the W prime, which is your anaerobic power, has gone up a lot. Um, but actually, if you look at the numbers, the big gain was in the, is in the three minutes and not as much in the 12 minutes. Um, now, there's a lot of different ways to do the testing as well. Um, so we'll go over to one of Tom Bell's uh, websites. Uh, he's got quite a good article, and this also allows you to characterize what your W prime is. Obviously, critical power, everyone knows what a good number is and a bad number is because it's relative to threshold. It's seen as a little bit higher than threshold potentially, but you know. Anyway, so what you can see here is that a W prime for an average male endurance rider would be maybe 16 to 20 kilojoules. Um, and that a W prime for a well-trained female could be 11 to 15 kilojoules as well. So I think the thing with it though is that the more well-trained you are, expect to be at lower. Um, which is why it can be weird. So I'd say that's the one of the, the sort of issues is that if you're testing someone who's really, really fresh, then it cannot be the, always the most accurate. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we're going to go over to Tom Bell's website here again. He always has some good stuff um, and sort of show you just roughly. Also, the, the way I like to do it is a three and 12 minute test. You can do multiple different tests um, instead. Uh, so, for example, you can just do any between about three and 20 minutes within a week, that's normally quite good. Um, but you can often do um, just the three and 12. So you can see here, you can do the two test method, which is the one I quite like doing, um, and it's validated, it's been seen in science. But anyway, as long as they're 30, 40 minutes in between, you can see this is the calculation that you do um, in order to work out the the critical power. Anyway, we're gonna go to critical power calculator now. So we'll, we'll sort of put in, We'll do three tests, so three minutes, um, let's say five minutes, because that's always quite an interesting one, and we'll do 20 minutes as well. So what you'll see here is that um, the results change quite a lot depending. So, you know, if you sort of put in quite an, uh, sorry, hang on a minute, quite an aerobic athlete, you'll see here, or sorry, anaerobic effort, you'll see here ridiculous W, t w prime, um, but the goodness of fit is pretty good. So it means that, you know, all the efforts were paced quite well, um, but you could also see, you know, if you if you put this up to maybe 350, uh, what you'll see is that the W prime um, has has gone down significantly. Still very anaerobic. Obviously, this is a bit of a joke of an athlete, but we'll we'll put something put something more reasonable. So sort of 500, maybe 470 and 350. And again, you can see the W prime starting to go down and the critical power goes up. And that's the thing they have a a relationship. Um, if we do some of my own power, sort of see roughly where I fit on this. Uh, these are like my best ever, so you know, probably not actually what we're talking about. You can see here again, my W prime is still pretty high. Um, goodness of fit is like ninety six percent, and my critical power is a lot lower. Um, so I don't think it always works because I don't think I'm that punchy, uh, to be honest. But you know, sometimes it, it reckons it does. Um, and yeah, so that's sort of the numbers you're playing at. The more this goes up, the more the W prime goes up, and the critical power goes down because. Again, as you can see here, you're sort of measuring the underneath. So, you know, if the critical power goes up and the W prime has to go down, you can actually get negative W prime values uh, if you're very odd. But obviously that's not actually physically possible, but if you play around with the maths, it can be done. Um, but yeah, those are basically my thoughts. It's pretty good. I still think the biggest issue is, is this. 
which is setting your training zones because training peaks and almost everyone uses threshold right and then everyone uses critical power and people reckon it's 94 percent here so but then other people reckon that it's not 94 percent or whatever but it, so that's the only issue i'd say is is making sure that you get your zones right i think it's good to identify who's good and bad but then when you convert that into threshold i, I think it's too low and you know you might say okay that's an ego issue what you know it doesn't matter if your threshold's too low but I just think it is because I genuinely find if I do a 20 minute test and take 95%, I can do all my intervals, right? So I don't really understand why this is so much lower. And then I think the intervals would just be a bit too, too easy, to be honest, and probably not the zone you're thinking about. Obviously, you know, it's done in the literature and all the rest of it. And I don't know if people have done exactly what it is, um, you know, if they've done a study on the difference. But anyway... Those are my thoughts. Um, let me know what you prefer to do, critical power or, or threshold testing and what type of each testing.